Good morning, comic book fans. Welcome back to Comics in 5 Minutes. I'm your ever host, Shorty. And today, we're going to take a good look at Under York. Brilliant title, excellent cover. And it intrigued me and impressed me before I'd even read the comic book. Uh, basically, I really like urban fantasy as a genre within a genre. I really enjoy it. It's the kind of thing which I will pay attention and probably give something a shot. I prefer my urban fantasy on the darker side, Neil Gaiman-esque on London kind of feel to it. These days, it does feel like it's more of a YA genre, and that seems to be a little bit more aimed towards a femme audience, and I don't mind that at all. But it also means sometimes I see books and I feel like they're not written for me, and I, I haven't really engaged with it that much. I mean, yeah, Joe Abercrombie's still doing stuff, and it's fantastic. Not Joe Abercrombie, Ben Aranovich is still doing stuff within the genre, which are fantastic, and he's having a lot of fun. But I don't get into it as much as I'd like, but it's nice to give it a try. Secondly, it really does engage with the fact that New York City is full of a variety of different people and cultures. It is not homogeneously white like a lot of New York stories are, and I really, really like that as well. Uh, unfortunately, what this means is, if I go into a comic book reading with a few things that I really, really like about it, I sometimes feel like I look for things to take away from that, like to pull it down from the the height I've put it to without even reading it. And I don't get me wrong, that is a good critical way to look at things. And I really hope that when I do give this book criticism, it doesn't come across like I'm just trying to tear it down. I just really like the genre and I do want it to be as good as it can be. Um, first off, though, I'm going to say how amazing it looks. Uh, it's Merck and Dolfa who does the artwork, uh, and Sylvain Runberg on the writing, uh, who I don't really know much about them. Uh, but Merck, uh, yes, I've been aware of their work for a while. She is a fantastic artist. Like, her stylistic choice appears to be gorgeous. Um... And I guess if I'm going to lay any criticism on here is the fact that, yes, this comic book is absolutely chock full of very pretty people. Um, and again, I do prefer my stuff to be a little like on the dark side. Go and watch the TV adaptation of uh, Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere for my level of uh, urban fantasy. And this one, even the city itself is absolutely gorgeous. And it looks fantastic, by the way. The three-point perspectives and uh, everything about it looks fantastic. But again, I want it to be a bit more grungy. That's just me, though. That's just me. Um, but the city should also be part of the character of the story. It's one of those things that urban fantasy is known for, much in the way of sex in the city. The character of the city is important. It should be relevant to the story, and it should come up as part of the storytelling process. In this, we don't get a lot of that in the issue one, but we get some really nice setup in the fact that there is New York and then an under York, and it is broken down a little bit by the various cultures that exist within New York City. And I like this. It's a little bit odd that they're all separated out into their own very distinct areas. Um, but I also don't feel like that's going to be a, a deal breaker for me. It's an interesting way to look at the population break, uh, breakdown of New York. Uh, we also get like a lot of set up for the magic system in the world. And I've said this before, like as a, a role player and a GM and somebody who's created little role playing things, Sometimes I present with a magic system in a work of fiction. My brain starts trying to work out the system of it, trying to figure out like a way of making it fair if people are going to create characters in this world, how I could make the magic make sense consistently. And sometimes that's easier than others. Uh, sometimes it can be very, very vague and it's completely up to how my brain interpretation, interpreting it. In this case, again, there isn't really that much. We get a sense that there are different schools of magic and they can do various things and it is possible to be better through practice. Um, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I like all this kind of thing. But it doesn't overwhelm me with it. It doesn't make a point of telling me that there are all these rules and this is how it works and you need to do X, Y, and Z to accomplish one, two, and three. It just lets the magic work. And again, it looks absolutely spectacular. Um, on the topic of things looking spectacular, like I said, there's an awful lot of very pretty people in this comic book, and I did almost bounce off that idea, but one of my favourite moments in it is our main character has a roommate who is the walking embodiment, the true epitome of pretty white girl privilege. And she is a fantastic character, really well written, and I hate her. Um, it'd be very easy to kind of give her a sympathetic thing, because she doesn't seem to know that she's exceptionally annoying and so self-centred that she can't possibly imagine a world where she's in the main character in a story and the length she goes to to centre herself at the expense of other people simply because she's unaware of it. It could be written as that, yeah, okay, we have to let her off here, she doesn't really know any better, but at no point does the writing of the story make me think that that's the way they're going. We should still be allowed to judge these, per these people who have nothing but privilege. It's nice to have sympathetic bad guys. I like that when you can look at what made them into who they are and their background and the place they have in the world. It is easy to see that there are reasons why people went down this route. When it is just having privilege and not understanding that that makes you privileged, I think we're still 
allowed to, you know, not like these people. And it's kind of cool that we go with that. Um, there is also an arcing story, and there's villains, and there is uh, lots more to come in this one. I like the fact there's an issue one, which doesn't overwhelm me. I like the fact that it's left a lot there for me to think about it as I'm carrying on going. And I am going to carry on with this one. I am not saying it's like the best thing I've read, not even the best thing I've read this week, but it's interesting enough, and it does stuff with the genre that I'm really looking forward to seeing how they uh, play out. Uh, that's it for me for now, though. Until I see you all again, look after each other, everyone. Stay safe. Bye!